Hello, I'm Ron Vail. I'm a professor at the University of California, San Francisco, and an investigator with the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. And in these three lectures, I would like to tell you about uh, biological motility. Now, there's some types of biological motility that everyone's familiar with. For example, the contraction of your muscles, or maybe the movement of sperm, or the beating of cilia and flagella. But it's also true that the interior of all eukaryotic cells is teeming and bubbling with all kinds of uh, intracellular motility. Let me take you here into the interior of a squid giant axon seen in real time through a video mic microscope, very much uh, like the uh, original experiments of Bob Allen, Scott Brady, and Ray Lassick. And what you can see here is a tremendous amount of motility, all kinds of small organelles which are traveling between the nerve cell body and the distant, uh, distal nerve terminal. And these long snake-like things here are mitochondria that are also moving through this uh, very dense cytoplasm. Indeed, if you uh, turn a microscope to any eukaryotic cell, you will see lots of intracellular motility like this. Here's another prominent example of uh, intracellular motility, the process of uh, cell division. Here the DNA in green, the microtubules in red, the DNA uh, congresses to the middle, and then the physical separation of the sister chromatids to equally partition uh, the genetic material. Uh, now, all of this fantastic intracellular mot motility is driven uh, by biological machines called molecular motors. And that is going to be a major subject of these lectures. And just to get you in the right spirit for thinking about these molecular machines, I'd like to show you uh, an animation that was uh, developed by Ex Vivo in conjunction with uh, Harvard and the Howard Hughes Medical Institute that takes you into the interior of the cell to show you a little bit about what these uh, machines uh, might be doing. What I hope you can appreciate from that uh, remarkable video is that the cell interior is packed with interesting machines. Maybe they don't work exactly as they're shown in the video, but the spir spirit of the video shows that the inside of cells is very complicated. There are lots of molecular machines uh, that are working together to create all of this uh, complex cell behavior that makes cells function and execute a number of uh, complex uh, behaviors and abilities. So there are three classes of cytoskeletal motor proteins. There's uh, kinesin, myosin, and uh, dynein. And these motor proteins use chemical energy from ATP, and they use this energy to move unidirectionally along a track. I should, these are going to be the main focus of my lecture, but I should also stress that there are many other kinds of molecular motors in biology. Uh, in addition to these cytoskeletal motors, there are motors, for example, that move along DNA, or also RNA as well, helicases, polymerases. There are also rotary motors, motors that spin around, such as motors that drive uh, the bacteria flagellum. Um, and there's also a remarkable uh, rotary motor inside of your mitochondria that spins around like a turbine and makes ATP. That's the uh, engine that makes all of the ATP in your cell, and that's the F1, F0 ATPase. Now, like your car engine, they also need uh, a fuel source. And they use a chemical fuel, which is ATP, uh, to produce their, their work. Uh, comparison to hydrocarbons for your automobile. Um, they move at a few millimeters per hour, which maybe seems pathetically slow and compared to your car moving on a highway. But if you actually do the calculation of how fast these motors are moving relative to their own length per unit time, they're actually doing uh, moving several times faster than your car engine is on a highway. So let me now dig in a little bit and tell you a little bit more about the components of these molecular machines. 
So for cytoskeletal motors, uh, they work along tracks, and there are two main tracks that uh, are, are used to produce motion. Um, one is the microtubule shown here, and it's a cylindrical polymer made up of repeating subunits of alpha beta tubulin. The actin filament is surrounding the outside of the cell, and the microtubules are more interior, such as shown in this um, mitotic spindle. Now, one other thing you need to know about these tracks is that they're polar, they're polar structures. Each of the subunit proteins that make up actin and microtubules are themselves uh, polar, they're asymmetric, and these subunits polymerize in a head-to-tail manner. And that results in a net polarity of the whole uh, filament. Now, this polarity is, is also true in um, interface cells as well. Here is just a generic um, fibroblast with microtubules extending all throughout the cell but in an organized fashion. The minus ends of these microtubules are found at the center, at a place called the centrosome, and then these uh, uh, microtubules extend out, their plus ends extend out to the periphery of the cell. I should also say that the motors recognize this polarity, and uh, a given motor will only move in one direction along this track. Okay, let me now introduce you to the motor proteins and show you a little bit more what they look like. Here is a kinesin uh, motor that is moving along a microtubule track, and the functional engine of this motor is shown here in purple, right over here. It's these purple uh, domains of the kinesin molecule that are uh, churning up the ATP and moving along uh, this microtubule track. Beyond this so-called motor domain, uh, the rest of the molecule is uh, referred to as the tail domain. And you can see here in the case of kinesin, part of the tail domain uh, is an alpha helical coil coil, and that dimerizes to um, uh, kinesin polypeptides together, which is very common for many motor proteins. At the far end of the kinesin motor is another dom uh, part of the tail domain that docks this motor onto a particular cargo in the cell. Here, shown kinesin docking onto a membrane organelle um, uh, to, to specifically transport this uh, cargo inside of the cell. Now, one thing, when I refer to kinesin or mycin or dynein, I'm not referring to one motor, but actually a big class of related motor proteins. For example, kinesin is not one motor, but in the human genome, there are 45 different uh, kinesin genes. And the reason why there's so many is that these different kinesins are specialized for different types of transport activities. That's why uh, there's so many of these kinesins, because they perform a whole variety of different kinds of uh, transport functions. Some kinesins are involved in moving uh, intracellular membrane organelles, like I showed you in the Squid Giant Axon movie. Other ones are moving mRNAs or proteins, yet other ones are transporting building blocks up, up to the tips of cilia and flagella, and that's how, that helps these structures grow. Yet other kinesins are involved in signaling, uh, signaling pathways, and whole other groups of kinesins are involved in creating uh, the mitotic spindle as I showed you in that earlier movie from uh, Drosophila embryo, and in moving uh, chromosomes as well. Um, and these many kinesins uh, actually have a variety of different architectures. They, they have a similar motor domain here shown in blue, but if you just scan at this, the tail domains of these kinesins all look very different from one another, and that allows them to attach to different cargos and also be regulated in a number of different ways inside of the cell. Now, the topic that I'd like to finish this particular part of the lecture is how do these motor proteins actually work? How do they produce motion? Um, here, for example, is a kinesin motor transporting um, uh, plastic beads along a microtubule. And we'd like to know in detail how, how does this work? How is it that a very small protein molecule is able to convert chemical energy into this remarkable unidirectional motion?